What is going on guys, my name is Chaotic and welcome back to another Pokemon Go video. Now in today's video, I'm going to be sharing 10 tips, tricks and secrets that you may not know about Pokemon Go. So to start things off, did you know you can in fact use HTML coding when naming your Pokemon? So if you wanted to, you could either bold in the name or italicize it. And it's actually a very simple trick to actually do. So what you want to do is make your way to your list of Pokemon, select the Pokemon in which you want to change the name of, then press its name so you can edit it, and then enter the following if you want the text to be bold. Open angle bracket, lowercase b, closed angle bracket, the name of your Pokemon, open angle bracket, slash, lowercase b, closed angle bracket. Once you're happy, press OK, it will then apply the changes, and the name of your Pokemon will now be in bold. Alternatively, if you want the name of your Pokemon to be italicized, do the following. Open angle bracket, lowercase i, closed angle bracket, the name of your Pokemon, opened angle bracket, slash, lowercase i, closed angle bracket. Again, from here then, once you're happy, press OK, it will then apply the changes, and the name of your Pokemon will now be italicized. It's a pretty simple and easy trick, as I'm sure you guys would agree. Most Pokemon players won't know of this one, which will give your Pokemon's names a rare and unique look. And why not go ahead and show your friends your new Pokemon names once you finish renaming them, as you may get some really good reactions from this, and they'll definitely want to know how this trick is done. Moving on to the next feature, this will allow you to change your character's customization at any time. You may recall when Pokemon Go was first released, this wasn't an available feature in-game. But the most recent update has added this feature into Pokemon Go. So what you want to do if you want to change your character's customization is first of all, press your character's face which is located in the bottom left hand corner of your mobile device. Then you want to press the options button which is in the bottom right hand corner of your screen and then select customize. From here then you can fully customize your character just like you could when you first downloaded Pokemon Go and created your character. Now moving on to the third secret trick, this is not stated anywhere in game which is why it's worth bearing in mind. But basically, you can increase the number of Pokemon which make their way to your location whilst using incense by simply moving. Now if you stay still whilst using incense, you'll find that one Pokemon will go to you every 300 seconds. But if you're moving around at an average speed of 200 meters every 60 seconds, you'll find at least one Pokemon goes to you. So basically it's five times quicker if you want to catch Pokemon whilst using incense by moving around than staying still. So although it may be much easier to stay in one location and let the Pokemon go to you, it works out a lot more efficient by walking around whilst using incense. So don't waste it, it can be a very useful item, maximize it as much as you can by simply walking around as it'll give you the opportunity to catch an additional 30 Pokemon. Now it's no secret the Pokemon Go absolutely kills your battery, but I do in fact have a very useful tip to share with you guys to help save your battery and maximize it as much as possible whilst playing Pokemon Go. As I'm sure you guys know, Pokemon Go uses Google Maps for its mapping. So what you want to do is go to the Google Maps app on your mobile device. At the top, press Options and then select Offline Maps. Then press the Add button at the bottom and select the area that you would usually search for Pokemon in. And then download that area of the map. So now when you go back to play Pokemon Go, the app itself doesn't have to download the local area map every time you play as it's already saved on your device. This will save you a lot of battery in the long run. Now something which I know many players don't know about Pokemon Go is which Pokemon can be hatched in which eggs. Well, for starters, there are three types of eggs available, those being the 2km egg, the 5km egg, and the 10km egg. And each egg actually has its own category of Pokemon, as this image demonstrates. This image actually shows off all the Pokemon you can hatch in each egg. So, for example, in a 2k egg, sure you can get things such as a Pidgey or a Magikarp, but you can also hatch rarer Pokemon such as Bulbasaur, Charmander, Squirtle, or even Pikachu. Then, as for the 5k egg, again, there are plenty of commonly found Pokemon that can be hatched in one of these, such as Psyduck, 
Paras or Oddish, but you've also got some rarer Pokemon such as Tauros or Porygon, which can be very difficult to find whilst hunting Pokemon. But then as for the 10k egg, as you'd expect, there are some very difficult Pokemon to find in this category, such as Lapras, Snorlax, Magma and so on. Ideally if you can, try and hatch as many of these as possible as you can get your hands on some very difficult Pokemon to find by simply walking around whilst catching normal Pokemon. Now whilst we're talking about eggs, let's move on to the sixth tip in this video. That being that you cannot hatch eggs whilst travelling above 15 miles an hour. Now I'm sure most people have tried this, trying to hatch your eggs whilst in a car or on a bus or on a train, but unfortunately you cannot do that. If you're travelling above 15 miles an hour, your egg will not hatch. But if you're trying to hatch your eggs as soon as possible, you could always try running, cycling, skateboarding or anything like that, just as long as you don't go above 15 miles an hour. Anyways, moving on to the seventh secret feature, that being the amount of distance that each footstep represents. Now sure the footstep feature is no longer available in Pokemon Go, but it's only been removed temporarily and it will be returning very very soon in the next few days and weeks. And when it does, this could become very very useful to you. So to start things off, no footsteps of course represents the Pokemon being in your close proximity and should be visible on your screen, with your proximity being up to 30 meters. Then one footstep represents anywhere between 30 and 60 meters away from your location. Two footsteps is anywhere from 60 to 90 meters away from your location. And then three footsteps is anywhere from 90 to 150 meters away from your location. So like I said, although this information may not be too useful to you right now, once the footstep feature comes back to Pokemon Go, this information could be very handy to bear in mind when you're searching for Pokemon and there are some nearby. Now the 8th trick is pretty self-explanatory, but there are still loads of players out there in the millions that do not know this and use this and end up wasting loads of Pokeballs whilst trying to catch Pokemon. So what you want to do whilst in the mode of catching Pokemon is wait for the actual Pokemon to throw their attack or their dodge before you throw your Pokeball. Because once they have, a window opens which is roughly 3-5 to five seconds or so where you can throw the Pokeball and the Pokemon will not react in any way. This basically means you haven't got to worry about wasting your Pokeballs and throwing Pokeball after Pokeball without really knowing whether the Pokemon is going to react or not to your throw. I can assure you this will save you a lot of Pokeballs in the long run if you time the throw perfectly and not just throw them randomly. Now moving on to something really really cool about Pokemon Go that many players will not know, that being that Pokemon Go did in fact start out as an April Fool's joke by Google. Back in 2014, Google uploaded a Pokemon Go challenge video to their official Google Maps YouTube channel. And basically, it is the same concept as Pokemon Go, where players have the opportunity to explore to try and catch all the Pokemon. But it's really weird to think that just two years ago, this was simply an April Fool's prank, and it's now an actual game. I'm sure you guys are intrigued to see the full video, so here it is. At Google, we seek to hire the most exceptional people. Today, we're announcing a new job role and challenge. Pokemon Master. Pokemon Masters are the world's greatest digital explorers, and their passion for exploring will take our maps to the next dimension. It's always been important to us to have the most qualified employees at Google. Now, using the technology created by the Google Maps team, we've prepared the most rigorous test known to man to find the world's best Pokemon Master. Applicants must explore all types of terrain with Google Maps on their iPhone or Android to find each and every one of the wild Pokemon.
skilled applicants who collect every single Pokemon will be invited to the Googleplex to participate in the final round of hiring. The winner will start at Google on September 1st, 2014. We're eagerly awaiting your participation. After updating, open the app, tap search and press start to begin locating the many Pokemon hidden throughout the map. But finally, moving on to how you can buy things in the in-game store without spending any money. Now one thing which you can do is capture a gym and hold your position for at least 24 hours. This will earn you coins and gold dust for every 24 hours you can hold your position. The amount being 10 coins and 500 gold dust for every gym you can hold. But do bear in mind there is a maximum of 10 gyms that you can hold. And unfortunately the payouts themselves aren't really that high. For every gym that you hold, you'll receive 10 coins and 500 gold dust. So if you guys want to get yourself some in-game money for free and quickly, I would recommend using Bananatic, which is a rewards platform where you can get yourself free gift cards very, very easily. So what you want to do on your web browser is search up chaotic.bananatic.com. There's also a link in the description of this video which you can click, which will take you straight to the website. Just go ahead and register and once you have, you can then start playing games, downloading apps, watching adverts, things like that. All of these things will earn you bananas, which you can then redeem for gift cards, pay safe cash and so on which can then all be used in the Google Play Store so you can purchase items in Pokemon Go. I cannot stress this enough but it's very simple and easy to get yourself some free gift cards in Pokemon Go by simply using Bananatech so definitely go ahead and check that out like I said there's a link in the description. But well, with that being said guys, that is it for this video. I do hope you guys have enjoyed these 10 things that you may not know in Pokemon Go. If you guys could take a few seconds out of the click the like button, it would help me out a lot and it's also greatly appreciated. Also be sure to leave a comment on this video and let me know your thoughts and feelings about these tips, tricks and secrets. And if you have not subscribed to my YouTube channel, I'd recommend that you do, as I will be uploading some more Pokemon Go videos in the next few days and weeks. So with that being said, once again, thank you guys for watching, and I will see you guys next time.